There we go. Hello and welcome to day three of the challenge. We are going to focus on the seven chakras today. There are seven chakras and these have been known. These have been known throughout yoga and the more and more they're investigated and researched, people are learning that they're a very easy way to understand the body. They don't just apply to our movement. There are seven chakras and one person explained the chakras like a food pyramid, like the food pyramid. The thing that you need more of is on the bottom and the thing that you need less of is on the top. Although you really need all of the chakras to work together. When people have trouble getting the chakras to work together, they will go to someone like a Reiki professional and the Reiki professional will balance the chakras. Today, we're just going to learn about each wheel and we're going to learn a yoga pose that we can use to activate each wheel. Why am I saying wheels? Each chakra is understood to be a wheel, a wheel. And like a windmill, it turns and energy moving through it turns. So we have seven chakras. We have the root chakra. So there's one wheel. The next one is the, is the sacral chakra. The root chakra is burgundy, red. The sacral chakra is orange. The solar plexus is gold. The heart chakra is green. The throat chakra is sky blue. The uh, third eye chakra is royal blue. And the crown chakra is lilac. Now, all of these are wheels. And what makes the wheels run is energy moving through them and back up and through them and back up. Where do you get the energy for things to move through and back up? Well, we can physically help it with inversions and with our yoga practice and with moving physically. And every chakra has a mental and emotional and intuitive spiritual application as well. So when we're exercising holistically each chakra, then we are able to make sure that energy moves through them all. When energy doesn't move through, let's say the heart chakra gets stuck. Let's say you won't forgive someone. Heart chakra is forgiveness. Let's say that you have trouble having compassion for someone. If it's stuck, the energy that's above can't get down. The energy that's below can't get up. And now all of that's going to build and you're gonna have problems. And we see that some people who have a tendency to suppress anger, to suppress their feelings, to condemn themselves, tend to grow like this. This is a broad generalization, but you will notice, and I've noticed this with my clients who are working with their periods and who are working with suppression and forgiveness, that when they open forgiveness, especially forgiving themselves, this gets smaller. It doesn't mean that people who don't have large V's are walking around not forgiving people. It just means that this could be one of the reasons because the body is a 3D printer. It is acting based on what's happening in our intuitive, emotional, and mental bodies. So we wanna make sure to exercise and free and release as much as we can in all of these bodies and one way to do that, one way to holistically cleanse yourself so that you have the freedom to receive, so that you can be the grand central station of feelings and thoughts and innovations and impact is to look at the seven chakras. So let's start with the first one. Our first chakra, as I mentioned, is the root chakra. To activate the root chakra is very simple. It's to sit. As we discussed yesterday with grounding, when we ground, we are in communion with the earth. The earth's energy moves up. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So when we sit, the earth goes, yes, yes, I feel you. I see you. So sitting is a very simple way to activate the root chakra. We're sitting in easy pose. If you want to sit longer, I recommend using a bolster. I'm going to use this pillow today. When you use something like a bolster, you are able to engage and open up your hips. And that feels really good. Let me show you from the side. 
So a block, a yoga block or a bolster is a great way to open this part. And so that is how you activate the root chakra. The next chakra that we're going to look at is the sacral chakra. Activating the sacral chakra, it's located right here. Its color is orange and it is, while root chakra is associated with family, relationships, community, fellowship, connection, see how easy it is to connect with root to the earth. Sacral chakra is associated with money, how you spend your money, how you earn your money, your career, your relationships. And as this one woman, Caroline Mees, this amazing thinker, um, explains it, your second chakra is walking into every space in your life, every room, and it's scanning the people. Do you ever notice when you say, oh, I just don't get a good feeling about that person? That's your root, that's, excuse me, that's your sacral chakra saying, no, not this person. And so to activate the sacral chakra and to be able to let people be as they are without judgment, because our sacral chakra, if it is uh, rusty, not getting enough energy through it, it might be judgmental. And then we miss out on great people. It is called bound pose. To act, to get to bound pose, you're going to let the sacral chakra kiss the ground, right? And you're just gonna take one knee. So my knees are touching, my legs are touching, and I'm going to lay down eventually. But you're gonna take one leg and you're just going to pull it towards the earth. Eventually bound pose results in one leg on the ground in both feet with the top of the foot pointing towards the sky, touching the ground. You'll do this with both feet, keeping the knees touching, and you're gonna just kiss the earth with your lips. As they come closer, as your feet come closer and closer to the earth, you will, uh, they will move to either side of the hips. You can also turn your head, but I have headphones on, so that's not as accessible to me. This is bound pose bound angle pose. It's quite, it takes some effort to get the sacral chakra to stay on the ground and that's the point. Yoga isn't always easy. <laughs> okay, so this is the pose to activate the sacral chakra. I recommend when, since we're doing this early, early, early in the morning, I recommend using a bolster so that you are not putting too much stress on your body like this. So there's a little lump and now it's easier for the sacral chakra to stay in contact with the earth. Okay, the next chakra is the solar plexus. So the solar plexus is right here. It's this, so, well, sacral was here below the belly button. Solar plexus is just above the belly button. And I think of a lion, but a solar plexus is self-esteem. It's pride, it's gold, it shines like the sun and we want to keep it strong. But again, when we have everything leaning on one chakra, I don't know if you've met people who walk around like this, who are very proud, or you've met people who are a, a bit apologetic and they walk around like this. They are leaning too far into their chakras and they're depleting them. And when you deplete them, the chakras can't do what they need to do and they can't work in communion with the other ones. So really watching how you stand, letting the sacral chakra actually know its place. It's not, you're not, it's not everything being out word. It is letting it know, yes, you're important, but you're not the whole show. <laughs> um, so that, and that comes with good posture and that comes with, again, a solid, consistent yoga practice. So that could be every other day, that could be twice a week, that could be once a week, that could be two minutes and 52 seconds 
uh, doing the um, doing the five Tibetan rituals, which we will get to today. So the key to activate this chakra, in contrast to the other two, where we were focused on connecting it to the earth, we want to move it. We want to actually make it have to work, um, give it something to do. Um, pride is an action more than it is a feeling. So we will do a twist. And I think the most the easiest twist is actually prayer from chair. So I'm going to show it to you head on and then I'm going to show it to you from the side. So chair, to prepare for chair, you're going to touch the earth. Our feet are side by side. We're going to touch the earth with our fingertips. And when we bring our arms up, our I should show it to the side. When we bring our arms up, we're going to shift back. And the farther back we shift, the more we have to bend. You see what's happening? I'm touching the earth. And as I shift back, I bend. And as I bend, the farther back I bend, the lower I can bend. I keep my shoulders away from my ears. And then this is chair. And so we're going to just go to a seated twist. We need the core, <laughs> the solar plexus. And so we're going to take our hands in prayer and we're just going to bring one elbow or another. So I'm going to start with my left. We're going to bring one elbow around to the opposite thigh. That's my right thigh. And I'm going to push into the elbow. Notice that my elbow is above my knee. Above my knee. I'm going to push in and I'm going to make sure that my hip doesn't come to the side. I'm going to make sure it's not going like this. We want to make sure it stays back. And that twist of our body, oh, there's our twist. There's our activation of the solar plexus. Always breathing in the belly, feeling it back there. Okay, let's stand. This is Tadasana. And let's take the other side. Our hands brush the earth, and then they come back up. We sit back. Our hands reach up. Our butt is actually going to, I want to show this to you. So I reached back, and my butt was pointing out like a cup. But when this arm comes down, my butt scoops under like a spoon, like a scooper. Here, we're going to hold. I'm going to take two hands to prayer. And we're going to move to Twisted Prayer. Activating that solar plexus. Okay. And exhaling and inhaling. Bring everything up. And so now we just did seated. We did prayer pose. We did twisted chair in pr with prayer hands. You can do twisted chair in a lot of different ways. We did it with prayer hands. So I call it twisted chair prayer. <laughs> so our solar plexus and every chakra is actually both sides of our body. They move around in a circle, right? So we, we have warmth here, but we had to use this too. And every chakra is going to react from both sides. And that's important for when we get to throat chakra. So now we're going to look at heart chakra. Heart chakra is a really fun one. If you happen to have a yoga block, I've misplaced mine, then you can use a yoga block. I'm gonna use this pillow. And I do this often. If you come to my class, then you know that I'll give you a block and I'll say, okay, while well, we're waiting for everybody to arrive, please put this under your heart and I'll give you a block and you will lay on the block and you'll have the block under your heart chakra and you'll lay down. And this heart chakra is going to, in order to activate it, so notice my legs, they are in easy pose legs, but you can also do straight legs. You can do straight legs, or you can do 
I have a back injury that I'll have for the rest of my life. So I have to support my lower back on a regular basis. I'm also sway back. And if you want to know what that means, just ask me in the comments and I'll tell you. Um, but it means I have to give extra attention to my lower back. So I will often, instead of laying my legs all the way down, I will tend them like this. But today I'm going to do this pose with my legs in easy pose. And I'm going to allow my shoulders to melt over my pillow or block. I'm going to allow my arms and elbows, the eyes of my elbows, to face the sky. The palms of my hands to face the sky. And I'm going to breathe. And this time I'm going to emphasize breathing through my heart. You know I often speak against that. I don't want to speak on my habit. But we're activating the heart chakra. This is a passive way to activate the heart chakra. An active way would be camel pose. The color for heart chakra is green. And this chakra is dedicated to forgiveness and compassion. And you'll find that your heart hurts. Um, there is even a medical issue called broken heart, broken heart syndrome, and you can end up in the hospital. So we've got to really nurture the heart for resilience, to have generosity of spirit without breaking your own Physically opening the heart helps you accomplish that. Okay, and now we'll go to throat chakra. As I offered before, throat chakra, we're going to use it. So throat chakra is right here. Its color is sky blue. It is about communication. It is about honesty. Are you lying to yourself is something people will often ask somebody who's having a tough time at life because things keep having happening the same way for them. Are you lying to yourself? Maybe what you think is happening isn't actually what's happening. What are you, what are you, what are you, what are you saying? What are the words that you would put to this? We'll often say, tell me back what you thought I just said to you so that we can make sure that communication is actually happening. Not just thinking, not just feeling, communication. <laughs> okay, so the throat chakra, um, to activate it for today, we're going to do plow pose. I'm going to need you to watch the screen while we do plow pose because one thing you cannot do, cardinal rule of, cl of plow pose, is that you cannot turn the head to the side. Anytime you invert, you cannot turn your head. Your eyes must always be on the sky. Inversion is anytime that your legs and hips are are higher than your heart, okay? That could be legs up the wall pose, that could be plow pose. Today we're gonna work on plow pose. So the throat chakra is here, but it's also here. And something you can do when you're going to sleep at night to help, ah, to help release the throat chakra is actually to, when you're about to sleep, you'll notice that your tongue is active. Physically, Force your tongue, don't force, but gently lay your tongue so that it lays in the, in this area, down in this area of the throat instead of up here. Instead of it being flat up here, that actually requires the tongue to activate. We wanna lay it down. And when we lay it down, this now opens up. And so we're going to, we get a lot of tension here a lot of constriction. You'll find sometimes when you're not being authentic or when you are, but you're scared to tell the truth, you will actually choke. And that happens like this. And so we're gonna stretch that out with plow pose. Here we go. Watch me and then I'll tell you. Then we'll all do it. So for plow pose, we're gonna start like this. Starting the pose is doing the pose. So if this is as far as you get today, that's totally fine. Then we're going to bring our legs up and we're gonna push with our hands. If this is as far as you get, that's fine. You can take a bolster and support yourself where you are. And there you are, that's your plow pose for today. Now that's a tough place to stop, but I'm not gonna say that you don't stop there. You can stop wherever your practice is comfortable. Now, using momentum, you'll just push up and over. 
And there you're in plow pose. Now it's morning and my neck is quite tight. So I'm not gonna hold it long, but this is where you're going to aim to be. You want, right now my body is not above my, like perpendicular to my legs. It's kind of laying back, that's okay. That's where I am today. But are my elbows are pointing towards each other and my hands are on my lower back and they're just gonna walk up my back. And my eyes are looking at the ceiling and my neck is flat against the ground. Well, it's not flat because there's a curve in the spine at that point, but the bottom of my head and the top of my shoulders are touching. They're making a little bridge. And that is going to help activate this throat chakra. This constriction, oh, everybody can join me in plow pose now. This constriction that you're hearing in my voice is actually really, really helpful. It is aggravating a gland. It's squeezing a gland in my throat that is very important for the throat chakra. And um, this gland activation is also happening in rabbit pose. If anybody studies Bikram yoga, then we actually try to activate this gland by folding our head tight, 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 our chin tight, tight, tight to our chest. And you'll often feel nauseous afterwards, but it's really helpful because it helps detox that gland. And that's what we're doing now. So we're working the front of the throat by squeezing this gland with our chin tucked in. We're working the back of the throat by stretching that muscle. Okay, we've spent enough time up here and my plow pose has grown. I'm almost perpendicular to the ground. <laughs> Too gently, release this pose. We're going to listen to me, do not look at the screen. We're going to take our hands and put them on our ankle. And then we're going to ease ourselves down. So the more we push our hands into our ankles, the slower down we're gonna roll. The more we push into the ankles above our head, the more resistance we offer, the more slowly we'll roll down. And that is the throat chakra activation. Now let's move over to third eye. We're gonna flip over to the right side, to your right side, and you're going to push up on your left hand. And now we're going to go into child's pose. We're going to do active child's pose again today. So you're going to spread both knees. You're going to reach back and our hands are overhead and our third eye, that's the third eye is going to kiss the mat. Because it's an active child's pose, my core is lightly activated. My shoulders are still pointing towards my heart rather than my ears. My palms are activated. You'll notice this is a delicate counter pose to plow, which we just did. The third eye is dedicated to reasoning not by accident, it's on the same plane as the ears and the, well, it's just above the ears and the nose and the eyes. Notice the, the instruments for asserting reality, for understanding what our surroundings are offering us are all very closely situated to the third eye. It's what we see in the three-dimensional world. We're going to have another day where we discuss feminine and masculine energy. And the third eye is the power chakra for the masculine energy. And the heart is the power chakra for the feminine energy. Feminine energy feels through the dark. Masculine energy uh, evaluates based on the outside. So feminine energy is the within, and masculine energy is the without. This is reason, this is maybe yes, maybe no, Buddha, royal blue. The willingness to co-captain, to defer to the heart is essential for the third eye not to deplete itself. You'll notice that countries that are obsessed with thinking and achieving mentally, 
achieving through only solely intellectual pursuits. They tend to have a lot more optometrists and a lot more ear doctors because they are depleting their third eye. Okay. So we have done six chakras. There's only one left. It's the crown chakra. The crown chakra is lilac. It's lilac and it's above our heads. So a lot of times we want to say, okay, then headstand is going to get us in contact. Well, headstand would, um, but this is a beginner's practice and we're going to ease our way towards inversions and toward headstand. So for today, I'm just going to demonstrate for you how to find the point of contact for the head. It doesn't have a pose name, but the finding for where your head is comfortable to support one third of your body weight when you do a headstand is going to activate the crown chakra. So let me show you how to do that. Keep your eyes on the screen. To find that, you're going to bring both arms out like this. You're going to spread out and you're going to start at the tip where your hairline or where your hairline, if you, if you are balding or bald, where the forehead stops and the crown of the skull begins. Then you're going to push up and over to the center of your skull. And now you'll find that, you'll find a spot that feels really comfortable. The reason our hands are out is so that they can support us so we're not putting too much weight on our head, but so that you can also get a feel for where, what's gonna be comfortable, what's gonna be a place where you can set where you can not feel pain when you put weight on it. And once you find it, stay there. Don't look at the screen. Shoulders are, shoulders are away from the ears, still, always. Okay, I will tell you what to do after you found this spot on another day, because today is not about inversions. <laughs> so to ease off, you're going to walk your hands towards your head and push up. Okay, and we're going to end today with the five Tibetan rituals. You now have a pose for each of the seven chakras. If one is ever feeling weak, you know how to activate it. You see that most of these poses, albeit somewhat rigorous, do not require that you're super warm. And that is why I taught them, so that you can use them in a pinch to soothe yourself, to get through something, to help somebody else. Okay, so let's do the five Tibetan rituals. Starting with the spin. Eyes gazing at the floor and tap one, two, three, four, five. Close the eyes when your spin stops. Let's go to camel. Inhale, exhale. We might have done six that time. Okay, J. Starting at the top of the J pose and inhale. Inhale. 
And our final. Upward dog to downward dog. Inhale. Don't forget that activated hand pose, hand positioning. Three. Rolling through like a wave. And five. <sighs> you have completed day three of the yoga challenge the Sunrise Yoga Challenge dedicated to unleashing the magic of yoga. Don't forget, we have our journal. Even though we didn't take the time today, please remember to take a little bit of time before, after you finish this video or before you go into your day to recommit to your declaration, to your devotion for the next 30 days. I will see you tomorrow on day four. Thank you.